Now today we're looking at the engine coolant temperature sensor. We'll show three different techniques on how to test this sensor. The first one is using a scan tool. Option two is testing the sensor while the vehicle is running and attached to a multimeter, which I'll show you in a moment. Option three is removing the sensor and testing it on the bench. Let's do the first technique with the scan tool. Now using the scan tool by far is the fastest technique, but you don't have to do this by any means. I'll show you two other techniques in a moment. Now if you do not have a scan tool, you're looking to purchase one, this is $40. I'll include a link to Amazon in the description box below. If you don't want to pay the money, a lot of times you can rent them from your local auto parts store, or they'll just do it for you in the parking lot. The key thing is you want live data. You have to be able to read live data. So we're going to start the vehicle. And if you're not familiar with these scan tools, essentially you just plug it into the vehicle. They all have the same inputs, 1996 and newer vehicles, because it's a federal guideline. And we're just going to let the scan tool uh, spool up here. Now in the scan tool, you want to find live data or data stream, same thing and we want to select items. We need to find the engine coolant temperature sensor in the scan tool. Worth every penny. If you plan on doing your own auto repair, this is worth every penny uh, having a scan tool. So right here, engine coolant temperature sensor, hit the back arrow, and right now we have a reading of 75 degrees Celsius. Now, in my case, I do not have a check engine light. This sensor is working perfectly fine. I'm doing this as a how-to. But that being said, if, you, if your vehicle has trouble code P117, you will see 180 degrees Celsius or more, and the sensor is bad, needs to be replaced. That's it, you're done. And I'll show you on how you can replace that sensor in a moment. If your vehicle has P118, that's minus 40 degrees Celsius or lower. That's it, replace the sensor. So P117, 180 degrees Celsius or more, P118 is minus 40 degrees Celsius or lower. That's it. So that being said, let's say you don't have a scan tool, you don't want to use this technique, how can you test the sensor while it's still attached to the vehicle? Let me show you how. They're just flathead fasteners. That's all they are here. And in the back you just have rubber grommets, and there you go. Now it may be a little windy, but nonetheless, right here is where the sensor is located. So the first thing is we can test this sensor while it's still attached to the vehicle. So on the harness connector, which is at the 9 o'clock position, there's a little tab. You want to press in that tab. So I make sure... I don't want to block your view, but nonetheless, right here, I'll, let me pull it out first. So right here, there's a tab, okay? You just press down the tab, pull on the body, don't pull on the wiring. And then, taking a look at inside the sensor, as you can see, there are two prongs. Let me remove this. This is the uh, intake air temp sensor that we did a few days ago. Now you have two prongs in there. What we're going to do is hook this up to a multimeter and take a reading. Now this is a digital multimeter. If you do not have one of these, again, I'll include a link directly to Amazon. This cost me $20 and I've been using it for some time. It's a very nice multimeter for 20 bucks. You really can't go wrong. And as you can see, you have a number of different settings on the multimeter. In this case, we need to do an ohms test, which is a resistance test and you, what you want to look for is the omega symbol on the multimeter, okay? So you just turn it on to this, and then the multimeter comes with two leads, a red lead and a black lead. So we're just going to plug in the leads, and what we want to do is take a reading of that sensor. Now as you can see, that sensor is very, very small where the harness connector plugs in, trying to get these leads in there while the vehicle is running, it's going to be a little hard. So what I tend to use are these alligator clips. So essentially all that we're going to do, let me clean this up here so you sort of understand this. What we're going to do is, let's say these are the two leads from that sensor. We'll hook up one lead to one prong and 
another lead to the second prong, okay? And then, on the opposite end, that kind of hurts, on the opposite end, we'll just hook up the multimeter, okay? This frees up your hands, also in my case, it just makes it possible to film this. So this, this again, will go right to the multimeter, and as the vehicle is running, we're going to see a reading here. Now, as the vehicle keeps on running, it's going to get warmer and warmer. And as that happens, we should see the number decrease, this reading here. If it does not, then the sensor's bad. It's that simple. Or you may get no reading here whatsoever. You may get an incredibly high reading. But nonetheless, you'll see exactly once we hook this up, it will we'll have a reading, and that number should go down. So again, here's the multimeter. Let me zoom in here to the sensor so you can see what I'm doing. And I'll give you a different shot in a moment. So one lead, I'm just going to touch, let's say, we'll take the white lead to the left prong. Now it doesn't matter which lead touches which prong. You're just taking a reading here, essentially. Okay, and I'll give you a different view in a second. Just give me a, let me just hook this up. Okay, let's see, we should have a reading. We have 0.5 kilo ohms, so we're getting a reading. Let me bring you in for a close-up. So again, I just have these alligator clips connected right. Let me zoom out here. Okay, so the red lead to one, and the white lead is going to this guy. Very, very simple. So let's start the vehicle, and this number should decrease as the engine warms up. Okay, here we go. Okay, now it's starting to go down. And this is what you want to see, this kind of readout. Now, if you don't see a reading here right off the bat, just make sure your leads are connected very, very well. But that being said, this verifies that the sensor is working perfectly, perfectly fine. But if you do this test, you don't get a readout, it's not changing any numbers, or again, if the reading is just incredibly high, then the sensor is bad, and you just simply replace it. Now let's say for whatever the reason, you cannot perform this test while it's on the vehicle. Maybe you don't have alligator clips, maybe it's just at a bad angle for you, whatever the case may be. So I'll show you on how you can test the sensor off the vehicle. But let's say that you did this test and you need to remove it, just grab yourself a 17 millimeter wrench, as you can see it fits very nicely, and just remove it from the vehicle. Give it a good tug, and these tend not to be too tight. Now I'm not going to remove it just because uh, my sensor is perfectly fine here. And also when you remove it, you will lose some coolant most likely. So do it when the vehicle is cool. And any coolant that you do lose, just reapply fresh coolant back in the radiator. Also don't be afraid to disconnect any wire harnessings. Or harnesses, I should say. So again, if anything is in your way, this one goes up here. And here's the EGR down here. Now if this is in your way, just disconnect it. No big deal. Okay? Now let me just show you on how... Let's say that you want to test this off the vehicle. I have an extra sensor. Let me show you on how you can do that. Now this is a coolant temperature sensor that I happen to have in the garage. And for whatever the reason, if you're unable to test this while it's still attached to the vehicle, just remove it and you can test it on the bench. The exact same thing that we did. Grab your multimeter, set it on the ohms setting. Again, that's the omega symbol. And again, I'm just using alligator clips. So I'll place one lead to the right prong. So again, it's just going right to the multimeter. Very, very simple. And the other lead will go to the left prong. Okay. And we should see a reading. Now what I'm going to use is a hair dryer. I want to heat up this sensor. And as it heats up, this number should go down. So this is the exact same thing that you want to do to your vehicle. So here we go. And there you go. So if you see the exact same thing, your sensor is fine. 
Now if you do have a check engine light, it may just simply be you have a bad connection. But chances are with these vehicles today and the wiring being so good, if you have a check engine light, the sensor is probably bad. Very remotely, you may need a software update that only the dealership can do, but again, that's pretty remote. Chances are, again, just do this test. You can pinpoint if the sensor is good and replace it. Now, that being said, once you replace it, your car is up and running, you have to do one last thing, which is an idle reset for the memory. Let me show you on how you can quickly do that. Now, once you repair the sensor, you just want to erase the code with the scan tool. Now, if you don't erase the code and you fix the problem, the check engine light will go off on its own. But that being said, if you do have the scan tool, just go ahead and erase the code. So you just erase it. Here you go. And then the last step is doing an idle memory. So what that means is a lot of times with these modern vehicles, when you first clear the system of any codes, the car has to relearn the idle memory. In other words, what may, what may happen is you're, uh, you just erase the codes, now you're at a stoplight, and the RPMs will dip pretty darn low, and the car may feel like it's going to stall. So to get around that, you can start the vehicle, place the RPMs at 3,000 RPMs, and just hold it there. Typically, it takes a few minutes because you want to wait until the radiator fan kicks on. Once the fan kicks on, just let the car idle for five minutes or so, and that's it. A flip side is if you don't want to do that, start the vehicle and turn on the air conditioner and just let it sit there for five, 10 minutes, and a lot of times that's perfectly, perfectly fine. So I'm just going to do that now. Okay, so again, 3,000 RPMs. Okay, and then I'm just going to hold it here. Once the radiator fan kicks on, let it idle, good five minutes, and that's it. You're all done. So I hope that gives you a pretty good idea on what it takes to test and replace the sensor. As you can see, having that scan tool makes a big difference. But I sort of like doing it the old-fashioned way, grabbing a multimeter, hooking up the leads, and seeing the readout. I sort of like uh, that whole involvement, but again, using the scan tool is just so, so much faster. But that being said, any questions, comments, please leave it below. If you do have a TL, we have a separate playlist a number of repair videos just on the TL, so check that out as well. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.